YouTube. Hello friends. Welcome to Lizzie Pay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and today I've got a video for you that is just for fun. It's not a wrap up or a TBR or a tag or a project. It's just for fun. So the other day I was watching Chloe from Always Booked and she did a video that she called her top 20 most read authors. And then we got to chatting about it a little bit during our live show on the 15th. That was a kind of our midpoint of the Summer Fling Readathon. That was over on Kayla's channel on the Fritz, if you want to check that out. And so we were talking about that, and uh, Chloe was like, yeah, you know, you guys should all check and see who your most read authors are. Well, I thought, oh, I kind of know already who my most read authors are, but this morning I pulled up my Goodreads, and I clicked on Red Books, and clicked on author so that that would alphabetize them by author. And I was surprised because some of the ones I thought would be in my top 10 or 20 were not. And there were some there that I'd kind of forgotten about. And so I just thought it'd be fun to share with you. Now, I'm not going to probably do my top 20. I'm going to do my top 12, and I might mention a couple of others. But I'm 55, and I did not start following Goodreads, until, or I mean, I didn't start my Goodreads page until 2015. So I had pretty much 50 years of reading that I did not track. So I have gone back. In fact, just today, I added some more books that I've read, that I know I've read, that were not on there. And I have now not quite 2,000 read books on my Goodreads to, to go from. Now, I know I've read some other books, but, you know... You can only do what you can do. But of the almost 2,000 books that are on there, I have about 45 authors that I've read eight or more books by. And of those 45, I want to tell you about the ones I've read the most. So the ones that I've read 20 or more amounts to about 11 or 12, something like that. And so that's what I want to tell you about today. And then there are some that I read in my childhood that I'm pretty sure I read maybe at least 15 or so, and I'll give them honorable mention when we get to the end, but I don't know how many because it was just too far back and their books from like a series or, you know, I, anyway. Let me just stop rambling and tell you about the books. So if you watched Chloe's video, and if you didn't, I'll link it down below. But if you watched her video, you know that her top most read author was like way over and above any of her other authors. Mine are a little closer together, but my top author, my most read author, is exactly the same person as Chloe's, and that's Debbie Maycomber. Now, she said she has read maybe 73 books by Miss Maycomber, and I have only read 45. It feels weird to say I've only read 45, but I told Chloe in the comments that uh, now I was going to have to make it my goal to catch up to her 73. Of course, by the time I get to 73, she will have probably read more, but Anyway, uh, you know, and she's only 30. I'm 55. So I was joking with her on the live show. I was like, what have you been doing your whole life? You know, oh, I'm reading Debbie Maycomber. <laughs> but anyway, Debbie Maycomber is a fantastic author. She writes women's fiction and romance and does it very well. You can just find such good stories if you read her books. Now, she does not write Christian fiction per se, but she does write clean fiction for the most part. And I suspect that she probably is a Christian. I can kind of see that coming through in between the lines of some of her books. Uh, I don't know that for a fact, but definitely her books are very clean and you pretty much know what you're going to get most of the time when you read her books. Now she did start out writing for Silhouette and so some of those earlier books may be a little steamier than her older, you know, more, um, her newer books. I don't know. I haven't read very many of her older books, but I definitely do plan to continue reading more by her. She has probably a couple of hundred or more books and, um, or somewhere between 100 and 200 at least. And I've only read 45. So I've still got some reading to do. Now I started out reading her Blossom Street series because my sister recommended that book. That first book is called A Good Yarn and it's very good. It's about a woman who runs a knitting shop 
and then that's a whole series. Then I went on into the Cedar Cove series, which is set in the town of Cedar Cove. Each of the stories is about a particular family at a certain address. So the address is the title of the book. And I think there's at least 12 or more of those. And then there was a spinoff series of that called Rose Harbor Inn. And it takes place in Cedar Cove also, or at least nearby. And you occasionally see characters from the Cedar Cove series pop up in Rose Harbor Inn. And then I've read a few of her standalones, but not nearly enough. I've got a lot more on my shelf than I even realized that I that I do. So anyway, uh, Debbie Makeumber is my top one. Now, if you watch Chloe's video, you know that she had like 73 Debbie Makeumbers and then everything else was like in the teens and, and lower. Mine are not quite that far apart. My next one... I had almost forgotten that this person, and it, I shouldn't have forgotten this person, this author, because it's not been that long ago that I've read or listened to some of her books. And it's not a women's fiction author. It is a woman, but it's a mystery thriller author, J.A. Jantz. I have read from three of her four series. I have finished the Brandon Walker series, which is just a series of five. And I started out reading her with the J.A. Uh, with the um, J.P. Beaumont series. I think it, at the end, you know, when you're listening to an audiobook, sometimes depending on who the producer is, they will recommend, they'll say, if you like this book, you might also enjoy this book. And I think that's how my husband and I got started with J.A. Jantz, was because it was recommended at the end of another book. What that other book was, I have no idea. But we got started listening to the J.P. Beaumont series and eventually picked up the Joanna Brady series. And my husband has read the whole Allie Reynolds series. I have not started it yet, but I have read the other three. I'm not quite done with Joanna Brady and J.P. Beaumont. Almost. I'm getting very close. And I should be able to finish one or both of those this year if I can find the rest of what I need on audio. So then J.A. Jantz, I read, I have read 43 of her books, almost exclusively on audio. Same for Debbie Makeumber, almost exclusively on audio. Now, if not for audio, those two probably might not be at the top of my list. And this next one would be, because I have read, I think, um, almost all of the books I've read by her, I've read in print. And that is Lucy Maud Montgomery the wonderful, amazing author of Anne of Green Gables. I have read 33 books by Lucy Maud Montgomery. Now, you might be thinking, there's only eight books in the Anne series, and there's three books in the Emily series, and I know she's got a few others, but 33? Yes, there are some really fantastic books by Lucy Maud Montgomery. Now, by the way, I just wanted to just throw this out there. I usually like, when I'm talking about her on a video, I like to say Lucy Maud Montgomery. On all of her books, she is just listed as L. M. Montgomery. But when people say that, sometimes it sounds like they're calling her Ella. And it's not Ella, it's L. M. But then by the time you put an M in front of Montgomery, it just runs together. So I like to say Lucy Mon Montgomery, and I hope that doesn't bother you, because I know on her books it says L. M. Montgomery. Okay. That aside, I have read not only all of her Anne of Green Gables, Emily of New Moon, there's a duology about a pat of Silverbush, there's some other standalones that are about different females like Jane of Lantern Hill, Magic from Marigold, um, uh, what's the other one, the Blue... Uh, Blue Castle? Is that it? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, A Tangled Web. And in addition to those novels, there are several collections of short stories. And I have read, I believe, all of those that have been published. There are just some of her journals and things like that that have been published in more recent years that I have not read. But if I can ever get my hands on them, I will be reading them. So I have read 33 books by Lucy Mon Montgomery, and almost all of them have been in print. Only in more recent years have I reread a couple of them on audio and uh, and thoroughly enjoyed them. So, uh, and then there was a new collection of short stories that was just published for the first time just a couple years ago, and I listened to that on audio as well. Okay, so that was number three, and like I said, that one would have been number one if I was just talking print books. 
So the next one is a cozy mystery author, which now I wanted to just notate of my list of my top 12, it cuts a pretty good cross section of my reading. I've already mentioned a women's fiction romance author, and then I've mentioned a mystery thriller author, and then I've mentioned a classic author. So the next one is a cozy mystery author. Well, she's kind of a classic mystery author, but cozy before cozy mysteries were even a thing. And that's Lillian Jackson Braun. I have read the a complete series of, of The Cat Who, as well as the short story collections. There's three of those. And I think I have completed reading everything that has been published by Lillian Jackson Braun. They are pretty much all in the Cat Who genre, or the Cat Who series, and then there's a couple... A, I think at least one or two of the short story collections don't have really to do with the cat who, but it does have to do with cats. So anyway, everything's cat related and I've read all of those Mo almost exclusively on audio, except for the uh, story collections. I read those in print and I've enjoyed most of them only in the later last few when she had some help. Those kind of went downhill, but for the most part, I thoroughly enjoyed the whole series. And then number five is a Christian author. Now, again, this is one of those that I've read almost exclusively in print because I read them in my 20s before I ever really knew much about audiobooks. And you'll be able to see some of them right over here. It is Jeanette Oak. In my 20s, I was introduced by a co-worker to the Love Comes Softly series, which I own right here. And there's eight books in that series. And then there's a spinoff series of four more. Then I got my mom onto them. And we also read her Seasons of the Heart series, her Canadian West series. And then later on, I read her series that she wrote with T. Davis Bunn, which is the Song of Acadia. And that's probably my favorite. So she also has some standalones. They have been grouped together in kind of a collection. I think it's called Women of the West. And I have not read any of those that I can recall, but those are on my list. I need to get to those books uh, and finish reading through all of the Jeanette Oak catalog. Now, these are all primarily pioneer fiction set in Canada, and they're Christian books, and they're delightful. They're just a joy to read, and I have loved all of them. And then, so that's the top five. So the next one, oh, and did I tell you how many? I have read uh, 30... I'm sorry, 32 Lillian Jackson Braun books and 28 Jeanette Oak books. And then the next one is a cozy mystery author. I don't own any of them, at least not anymore. I think I used to have one or two. And that is Jeanette, um, no, <laughs> I already said her. The next one is Joanne Fluke. She writes the Hannah Swenson Baking Mystery Series. It's still being written. I think there's another one due out this Christmas and probably another one next uh, February. Is, I think it's when they usually come out and I'm caught up with the series. So far, I have read a total of 27 books by Joanne Fluke. And then the next one I had almost forgotten about, but I have read 24 books by Jennifer Shiverini. She writes really good women's fiction. Some of it's historical, some of it's contemporary. My favorite books by her are the Quilting series. It's called the, um, is it just called the Quilting? It's got a name. Not Quilters Retreat. Um, I don't know. It's a series about these women who have a quilt retreat at a manor house and it's just very very good in and within the series she also has some historical stuff where we learn about the ancestors of the woman who owns the, the manor and then she does have some historical fiction and some fictionalized history about um, mrs lincoln and some other presidential wives from back in the 1800s, maybe even 1700s. And I have read a couple of those, not as many of those, but she's a, a very good author and you can't go wrong with the quilting series. Those are just fantastic. And um, you might try some of her historical fiction if that sounds good to you. The Spy Mistress is one that's on my shelf that I have not read, but uh, Mrs. Lincoln's Dressmaker is one that I did read. I thought it was a little slow, but still a very enjoyable book, and I'm glad that I read it. So anyway, if 
uh, she sounds interesting to you, then you might want to pick up some Jennifer Chivarini books. And especially if you enjoy sewing or quilting or anything like that, because almost all of her books are related to sewing or quilting in some way. And then the next one on my list is my favorite. It's Jan Karen. Now, probably Jan Karen would be higher on the list, except that I've read just about everything that she's written, with the exception of this first book here is a treasury. It's a companion book, and I just can't seem to make myself get around to opening it up because most of what's in it is excerpts from these other books. So it just hasn't been high on my priority list. But one of these days I am going to sit down and get it read. And then also the cookbook. And I was looking through the cookbook not too long ago and there are some little snippets and narratives in the cookbook that may not be in these other books. So I need to just sit down and read the cookbook. And uh, with those two exceptions, I think I've read everything ever published by Jane Karen. And that total 23 books. Then the next one on the list, you have seen, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen a few of these books by this author this month, and that is Jody Thomas. She is a Texas romance author. Most of her books have some kind of suspense theme to them. Some of them are a little bit steamy, but a lot of them are just really good characters and really good storylines and just just great stories and characters and um like i said she gets a little steamy to to an extent but i find that for the most part her books are just really good and uh and i've enjoyed them a lot and i have audible escape to thank for getting through so many of these because that is how i have listened to most of the 22 books that I have read by her. I have read a couple of her more recent standalones in print, and Mornings on Main is probably my favorite standalone so far that I've read by her, but there are some more on Audible Escape that I need to get to. And uh, in fact, Jody Thomas right now is tied with the next author, who is a middle grade author, but I am going to be reading more Jody Thomas this month, so hers is going to be uh, bumped up just a little bit. So then the next one is a middle grade author. She actually has some adult books, and I think they are under different pen names. But I know her as Catherine Lasky, and I have read all of her Guardians of Gahul books, which are about owls in the future, and then a spinoff series of that called Wolves of the Beyond, which are about wolves in the future. And I have total, in total read 22 books by Catherine Lasky. And then the next one, which is, I believe, number 11, because I think that's 10 now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes. So, um, number 11, I have read 20 books by Rick Riordan. He writes, of course, mythology of all types, and his most famous are the Percy Jackson books, which I read and enjoyed several years ago. And I still have a few more to read, but I am almost caught up with his mythology books. Then I want to go back and read some of his mystery series. He's got a, a series that starts out um, the big red to big, big red chili or hot red tequila. I don't know. It's something that sounds um, Latino. I don't even know, but. There's a mystery series that uh, he wrote and published. That was his first published series. So I think those are on Scribd, and uh, I want to get to those at some point. So then I hate to end on 11, but that's really everything 20 and above. But if you want to go down and let me tell you about one more, just to round it out to 12, the next author is a cozy mystery author that, again, I would not have finished this many books if it had not been for audio. And I listened to these on Hoopla. The author is Cleo Coyle. They're a husband and wife team who write the Coffeehouse Mysteries. And they're set in New York City. Not my favorite of cozy mysteries, but still enjoyable. And I had several on my shelf. So I just decided, last was it last year or this year? It was this year. It was March Mystery Madness. And I just wanted to get those done once and for all. And I finished, caught up with the series so that I could then move those books off my shelf and make a little more room for something that I haven't read. So that is it. That is my top 12 authors, my most read authors. Now, if you're curious to go just a couple more down, I have read 16 books by Ann B. Ross, and now that number will be going up too, because those are the Miss Julia books. 
they're right here. I don't own quite all of them. I have read up through book 15, and then there's a novella that was couple books back, I think 14.1 or something. I've read that. There's 22 right now total, and I would love to catch up with those by the time the next one comes out, usually near the end of April. So my total for Anne B. Ross will be going up because I absolutely love the Miss Julia books, and I'm super excited to get some more of those books read. And then next on the list is Laura Ingalls Wilder. I have read at least 15 books by her at my count. There are, have been other books by her and some bind-ups of some of her stories and things. I have, I may have some up there and there's some down on my lower shelf. So if you added up everything by her and about her, it would be higher. But to my count, everything by her that I've read it counts to 15 books. And then the next one, uh, well, then I have two other here that I just want to mention because I don't know how many books I've read. One is Grace Livingston Hill. I read a lot of those in my 20s. I'm going to guess that I've read maybe 20, 15 to 20 by Grace Livingston Hill. It might not be that many, but I think it's, it's definitely somewhere between 10 and 20. And then the other one is a little farther back, is Nancy Drew. I really don't remember how many Nancy Drew books I've read. It probably, again, isn't more than 10 or 20. I went back through and just looked at the titles and the covers just to kind of see what I remembered. And I know I always wanted to read through the whole list, but I don't think I ever got that far. So anyway, those two authors, well, and I say authors, the author of Nancy Drew is Carolyn Keene, which I believe was a team of writers. I have no idea if they're male or female or whatever, but, you know, I don't know how many books that I ever read that were um, in that series. And I have read a few more in adulthood. I've reread some, and I've read a couple that I probably didn't read when I was a kid. So, you know, it probably amounts to 15 or 20 but I don't really know for sure at all. And then did I give you my totals? Now, of the authors that I have read uh, eight books or more by, there's a total of 45, 45 authors. And about 30 of them are female and about 15 of them are male. And then one of those is a is Cleo Coyle, who's a uh, male female writing couple writing team and then I have also read um, I think 11 of the left behind books and that's a um, a two-man writing team there so anyway just to kind of break that down for you um, I have not in my in the in my top um, several I don't have any authors of color that I know of but I don't know the racial heritage of, you know, of all of these authors. But um, I, had, I have got quite a few authors in my red list that are authors of color and and of different, you know, ethnicities and, and races and things like that. They're just, I just haven't read multiple, you know, a lot of multiple books by those authors. So, um, so anyway, just to throw that out there. And, um, so yeah, that's pretty much a cross section of my reading and kind of my upper upper list of, you know, my most read authors. Now this is completely different than my most owned authors, which if you're interested, I can do that video too and uh, and share with you the authors that I own the most books by. It's a completely different list. And uh and also I want to talk about uh, and do another update on my um, collected authors that I've never read because I have quite a few authors that I've collected more than f four or more books by and I have yet to read anything by those authors. I have made a, a tiny dent in that list in the last couple of years and I have read a couple of them so far in 2020 I think 
and a few last year. So my goal is just to at least check off a couple of those authors each year because if I'm going to have them on my shelf, I need to I need to read them. And so I have been trying to do that little by little. So anyway, that's all for this video. Um, let me know who your most read author is if you would like in the comments. I would love to chat with you about it. Are any of the authors that are in my top 12 list in your top 12 list or top 20 or whatever? Let me know in the comments and I would love to chat with you. So that's all for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.